over these last several weeks, instead of asking the question, what is it that lies beyond the state of Satchitananda? It's been asked, how do we maintain and sustain ourselves in that state of Satchitananda? But another very pertinent question is, how do we know when we are in a state of Satchitananda, or that state where existence, knowledge and bliss merge and are united. The great sleuth Sherlock Holmes, when he passed out of these earthly realms, was taken directly up to the pearly gates where he met St. Peter. And St. Peter recognized him straight away and said, Oh, you're the famous detective Sherlock Holmes. You know, before you're allowed into heaven, you have to pass a test. So he said, oh, St. Peter said, I've got a very interesting question for you. Tell me, uh, who amongst all of these people who are arrayed in heaven, which one is Adam and uh, Sherlock Holmes scanned all of those that he could see amongst the throng and he said why he's on the third tier down second from the left and St. Peter was just amazed he said how did you know how did you recognize him and uh, Sherlock Holmes said it's very simple, my dear St. Peter. It's a matter of observation and deduction. He's the only one without a navel. <laughs> In the far-off land of Tibet, there, in a little grove of trees, lived several group of monkeys. Now, there were two clans of monkeys, and each of them had their own leader, but they all got on very well. The leaders were in great agreement with one an another. But one day, the leader of the first monkey group woke up and said to his closest advisor, Oh, I've had the most dreadful, dreadful nightmare, the most dreadful dream. Every time I think of it, I get goosebumps and shiver all over. You have to bring the leader of the other group. We have to talk immediately. So his advisor went off and uh, they all gathered. They came after a little bit of formality that had to go through the courtesies that go between one leader and another. The first leader said, oh, I've had this dreadful, dreadful dream. We have to leave this place straight away. We have to go far away from here. I had the dream that we were all boiled in boiling water. We have to go. Well, it's a, this leader of the second band said, oh, a dream, dreams are only fantasy. What are you talking about? And they all started to titter and talk amongst themselves about uh, what was going on. But the first uh, leader was very adamant. So he said, you know, there are two types of dreams. There are dreams that indicate our aspirations and our fears, and there are dreams that are prophetic. We have to leave this place. Well, the leader of the second pen said, don't be so stupid, it's all fantasy. We, we've got this band, we've got trees, people respect us, they leave us alone, we have an abundance of food. No, we're not going to leave this place. And he said, look, even your own followers, they totally disagree with you. But do, if you want to go, you go. So the leader of the first band left. 
he went off as fast as he could go, leaving these two bands together kind of, you know, laughing at him, saying how stupid that was, how comfortable they were here, you know, with great derision and so forth. But you know, at, at exactly that same time, not far away, in the kitchen of the governor's palace, the maid was going to cook Tsampa. Well, you know what Tsampa is. It's cooked in an iron pan. First of all, there's sand, which is heated to a high heat. And then corn is added until the corn pops. And then it's all put through a sieve so that only the sand goes through and the corn is left. And then the corn is pounded to a very, very fine sand itself. And to that is added butter or tea or beer, depending on the person's taste. Well, it so happened that this maid was asked to make, make a great deal of tsampa because a foreign king had just given a number of elephants to the great Rinpoche of Tibet. And so those who bought the elephants to him had to be fated and thanked. The mammoths, they call them, who had taken care of the elephant. So this maid had the task of making sampa for all of these people. But when she came down early in the morning, she found that all that she had to cook the sampa in was a little tiny iron pan. So she was very peeved. She wasn't in a good mood at all. How can I cook sampa in this little tiny iron pan? It's going to take me hours and hours and hours. So she was grumpy to start with. But just as she was going about the preparation of this, the pet ram, one of those very woolly rams, who was the pet of the governor, who used to be the bane of the life of the maid because he always came into the kitchen looking for food and eating whatever was available to him, came into her kitchen. And to top it all off, he was eating the corn that she had to fry in the pan. So she brandished the only thing that she had in her hand, which was a lighted stick with which she was going to light the fire. So as she was waving it around at him, she set his wool on fire. So, of course, he went running out of the kitchen and the first place he ran into was the the hut, the thatched hut, in which the elephants were housed. And of course, this set the whole thing on fire. So the elephants got very sorely burned. Well, it was a very great dilemma. And the governor could only call the only physician that they had in the whole land who happened to be a bit of a shaman. So when he came and he went through his little spells and examined, he said, the only cure that I know of that's going to be a salve to these elephants and cure their burns is monkey fat. Mm -hmm. Well, the people were up in arms about this because they'd left all these monkeys alone because they believed that all of their dead relatives were souls were inhabited in the bodies of the monkeys. But then, of course, the governor says, but ah, these elephants are a gift from a foreign king to our great Rinpoche, who is greatly indebted to this foreign king well, of course, as soon as the great king's name was mentioned, everybody zipped their lips and bowed and remained silent. What could they do? So the whole town set off for the grove where they rounded up all the monkeys, 
killed them, skinned them, and put them in boiling water. Well, you know, there was not one monkey left to go and tell that monkey who'd had the dream what had happened. How does this story have relevance for us in relationship to the question that we can ask? How do we know when we're in a state of such it and under? It has to come down to our own experience. What is this state of Satchitananda when the three levels of existence or mind merge in the moments of our life to bring a presence, an awareness, a focus? What is present for us it's evidenced in this story that throws light and gives us confirmation that we are in a state of existence, knowledge and bliss, such it and under. What's the relevant point that you can glean from this story? Is it about dreams? What is it about this story that gives us an indication. How do we know when we're in a state of unity, consciousness? We just know. We just know. Then we know how. Yes. But the question is, how do we know? And for our purposes, since we have to give expression to it, this is why we're endeavouring to answer this question. How do we know? What is it about this story? It gives us an indication. Does it involve the instinct and, and or the intuition? Uh -huh. Because the monkey, he had a dream. In the instinct and intuition to actually believe in one. All right. The okay. And he was the only one that survived. And so what state was he in? Even when his, his other monkeys told him, that's a fantasy, we're not going to follow a dream. What is it about this state of Satyatananda, no matter what level it is that we're perceiving and experiencing? Yes, absolutely so. But specific to this story, what is it about this story that's present? in this state of uh, such it and under that we can recognize. Kind of knowing. Uh, kind of knowing. Uh -huh. knowing, yes. Mm. Certainty. Certainty. Absolutely. Absence of doubt, wouldn't you say? And isn't this what is present? when we're in a state of such it and under? Is there any dialogue in our mind doubting what's experienced and how it's interpreted? 
isn't it? Absence of doubt. This monkey <coughs> was a dream. But there was no doubt about it. You could do it, no matter what, even if everybody else disagreed with him. Isn't that equal to an absence of doubt or certainty? <coughs> what is it about this state of Satchitananda? There's an element of trust yes. in my feeling, intuition. Uh -huh. Which amounts to an absence. <laughs> well, you can still have argument, yeah. but then that's another story. Because we recognize that there is something greater. But that's for another story. I'd it's be out of business. <laughs> In the early stages, I would have an awareness but it was only afterwards, like the monkey, you know, it was only afterwards that I thought I did actually know. Yes. Um, when he was being boiled in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I did no, know. No, 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 not that. <laughs> but it's just that I think we have to have the experience before we know what it feels like. Yes. And then, and then we recognise the experience. All right. Beginning, we may not know, but what's happened with me is I've got answers that I think couldn't have come from my head. That's Ex not what I would, I would have, have said. said. Would exactly. Have exactly. Yes. Um, and it would be appropriate, and I would act on it, and it would and it would work. So it's that kind of experience that, for me, says, "This is how I can tell the difference between what I'm thinking up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what's actually coming from a deeper knowing." A deeper knowing. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to that uh, funny story about Sherlock Holmes, how is that relevant? when he says it's a matter of observation and deduction. Is that, do you think, relevant to what it is that you've been... Well, he had a lot of experiences. <laughs> <laughs> and so have yeah. we in the yeah, years. know when he was on the ball. Yes, and so do we. Yeah. Yes. He knew 